standards by which this country lives have died. <laughs> together for you tonight. I tell you, we did it all. We showered, we shaved, we gargled ourselves into a stupor. And why? Why? Because we figured it was about time. That's why. Ain't that right, girls? At this point in time, I would like you to meet and greet my backup girls. I call these girls my backup girls because that's actually all I ever say to them is backup girls. Back up. There they stand behind waiting to upstage, direct to you from the La Brea Tar Pits. They sing, they dance, they violate their paroles. Ladies and gentlemen, please, a hearty round of applause for the staggering Harlots Lady! these girls, each and every one of them a former junior miss. <laughs> Try and remain vertical girls at least through the first commercial. And as for you box watchers out there, in these United States, I know you're thinking, the divine knows all, sees all, tells all. I know what y'all are thinking, y'all are thinking. See, I got you all divided into three groups. This is the way it goes. First of all, there's the group who has never, never, never seen me before. And they're saying, Harry, is that the man from Atlantis? What has he done to his hair? Then there's the second group, see? The second group, they've seen me a couple of times. And they're saying, Harry, Harry, isn't that Bed Midler? Gee, is it time for the Grammy Awards already? <laughs> and those of you who know me well, who really, really know me well, the hardcore fans, y'all are saying, pass the brownies, Harry! <laughs> Saul Peter, Saul Peter, jumble with my Right here in the city, don't you know that it was grand, really grand, so grand. Then you came along, then you came along, boy. Sang Ruby song, sang a song, I asked her, here's to watch, call him, what you doing tonight? You're in the movie, cause I'm feeling just right. So I used to call the corner with a table for two. I have a music fellow and some gay rendezvous. They have no chance to mess with a blue attitude. You gotta do some dancing to get in the mood. Go on, Mr. Watch, call him, I'm a daddy to you. It all goes to show what good influence can do. They all felt so happy. I try to jump and make a pop for child Swing the room has given me a new attitude I saw a dream and a hit on the wall in the moon With my forever in the moon I've been in a hair in the moon I need some kiss You know I'm on the lawn before I'm in the moon Swing with me, what a wing will be a Say I am true to time But I'm in the mood all night, try to let's dance What a dream romance, ooh, it's a quarter three In the moon, not sure of me, you know I think it's rude to keep this way on the mood
really is quite enough opening number for me. I think I'll just lay back for half a moment if you all don't mind. Thank you, thank you. Oh, Lord, how does Marie Osmond do it? <laughs> you mean Marie Osmond doesn't do it? Oh, my, my, I heard you did. Well, anyway, this is my favorite position. I just love working the floor. I promise... <laughs> Go ahead and laugh if you like. I promised myself I'd never sink this low again, but old habits die hard. Ain't that right, girls? <laughs> the girls, they're so verbal, so articulate. <laughs> so rife with bon mot. <laughs> That's why I hired them to write this turkey. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes, indeed. I said to my girls, I said, girls, girls, I want our show to be illuminating. I want our show to be uplifting. I want, I want the show to be a vindication of Tolstoy's innocence. I want, I want... <laughs> I want an hour devoted to the twin deities of truth and beauty. <laughs> Talk about your big events. <laughs> Unfortunately, none of us know anything about truth or beauty. So we were forced to uh, pack our aspirations in our old kit bag and uh, give you what amounts to basically the same old S.O.S. The same old Shanola, thank you. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen, smorgasbord, leftovers from the smorgasbord of my life. Routines that are so old, they fairly creak and ache when the rains come. First, ladies and germs, I would like to present to you <laughs> my impression of the very short and the very sassy Miss Dorothy Hamill. Hostessing a cocktail party. Thank you. Shh. More ice? <laughs> Thank you. Yes. What do you say, girls? What do you say we sing a little bolado for these folks, huh? Uh -huh. Oh, the best, the best. I think they're in the mood for a little bolado. God knows I am. I could use a little respite from all this carrying on here, shaking everything we own. And a song about the sea. Uh, Y'all know the sea. You're from Los Angeles. If you're from Los Angeles, you know the sea. I uh, was born in uh, Honolulu, and uh, and uh, that's a little island. I mean, it's part of a little island that's surrounded by water. So me and the sea, we became pretty good friends, you know. Uh, actually, we uh, we went out together for a while. God, you're hip. <laughs> anyway, I, uh, I sing this song a lot to myself, you know, while, whilst turning on the dishwasher. I have moved up in the world, haven't I? <laughs> water, you know, water, anyway. I, uh, sometimes when I sing this song, I, uh, I think that this song isn't about the sea at all, but the song is about, uh, thank you, about longing and yearning to find something a little bit better in life. Well, I'm leaving my family, I'm leaving all my friends. Let's 
city skies I heard an old radio nearby A song so full of long ago A song they once called a stage tune They called it Dustin's tune Dustin? Hi, Ben. How are you? I'm great. Listen, I don't think we should waste any time with the idle chit-chat. No? I want everybody to know what I'm doing here. Okay. I, I play the piano, and I started playing the piano when I was six, but then I became an actor. And 20 years ago, when I was in summer stock and this girl jilted me, I used to go up on stage every day, and this is the truth, and I practiced and fooled around, and I came up with a tune. And a few months ago, I met you at a party, and I asked you if I could play this song for you that I wrote that had no words. And you liked it, and you came back a couple weeks later with lyrics which you had written, right? Mm-hmm. And that's what I'm doing here. Oh, I'm real glad. This is the pre world premiere of our song that we wrote together. Yeah. And your friend Peter Matz arranged it, and you have an orchestra, mm -hmm. and when we were rehearsing, it was the best experience of my life. No kidding. I hope we don't go downhill now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try not to. What are you doing? 
Well, I, 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 it's time to, for me to play the prelude. What prelude? Play C sharp minor by Rock. Oh no, 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 darling! You can't play this prelude in C sharp minor by Rock. No, no, you have to get to, dressed into your white tie and tails because we're going to finish up this set in a wonderful waltz into the sunset. And after we do that, I get to play the prelude. You oh probably... no, 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 no! I'm so sorry I didn't get a chance to tell you we that... don't get to do this prelude. Sorry, but the deal's a deal. I came now... here to play the song which you wrote the lyrics to, and I wrote the music. Well, to, and... doesn't the worm turn. Yes, the worm has turned back. I am now going to play the prelude in C-sharp minor by Serge Rachmaninoff. You can't do this to me. I've spent big bucks. I have done my best to accommodate you, and the least you can do is to do your best to accommodate me. All right. You want to take your hands off? All right, Dustin Hoffman, but you'll be a pretty sorry worm if I have anything to say about it. Special will continue.
walking 42nd Street one day. I wasn't working 42nd Street, I was walking 42nd Street. And uh, something very amazing happened to me. Uh, it was July, it was the dead of summer, it was very hot in New York City. It was about 98 degrees. And uh, I was walking east, and this humongous person was walking west. She was a great big woman. She must have been about, oh, 400 pounds. I, I, I swear to you, she must have been about at least 400 pounds. And she had this great big blue house dress on, peckered all over with little white daisies, you know? And uh, she was all bald. I mean, she was mostly bald up here on the crown, you know? And uh, perched right on her little crown was a, was a fried egg. And I thought it was just so amazing because uh, in New York City, the ladies with the fried eggs on their heads, they don't generally come out until, oh, September, October, you understand? So it was really quite an amazing sight there. It was the dead of, the dead of summer, the middle of the July, the great big fat woman with the little fried egg on her head. It was, it was quite demented. I, uh, I didn't quite know what to make of it. I, I, I didn't know what to make of it. But I'll tell you that, uh, it's the kind of thing that you really feel you have to tell people about because it's so unusual, you know? Ever since that day, I saw that lady with that little fighting on her head, you know? Not a day goes by that I don't think of her. And, uh, and right after I think of her, I say to myself, Oh, God, don't make me wake up tomorrow. I want to put a little fried egg on my forehead. And then right after that, I say real fast, I say real fast, Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, if by chance I should wake up tomorrow and want to put a fried egg on my forehead, don't let anybody notice. <laughs> and then right after that, I say real fast, real fast, I say, Oh, God, oh, God, if, uh, if by chance I should wake up tomorrow and, uh, and want to put a little fried egg on my forehead, and people notice that I'm carrying around something that doesn't look quite right. And they want to talk about it. Well, let them talk about it, but don't let them talk about it so that I can hear it. You know, I mean, I just don't want to hear about it. Because uh, as far as fried eggs are concerned, well, you can call them fried eggs. You can call them anything you like but everybody gets one and some people they wear them on the outside and some people they wear them on the inside the 
album, Broken Blossom. Beth Midler, her complete catalog, including her brand new album, Broken Blossom, is on Atlantic Records and Tapes. The men and women of the International Ladies Garment Workers Union who make their living making clothes for American women and American kids. Well, I did it. What do you think of that, huh? I'd like to thank my guests, Dustin Hoffman and Emmett Kelly, for showing up and being so nice. I don't see, I don't do this too often, and I was a little nervous, you know, but it wasn't half as painful as I thought it was going to be. I really quite, quite enjoyed myself. Thanks for, for, for coming to visit with me, and I hope I see you next time. Until then. Friday night on the Rockford Files, there's something fishy about a new offshore oil rig. When Jim investigates, somebody tries to sink Jim for good. Then Quincy's on a life and death assignment when a mysterious epidemic begins a lethal march through a small ranch town. Double action. First the Rockford Files, then Quincy. Friday starting at 9, 8 Central and Mountain Time on NBC. Be sure to watch The Tonight Show following local news next.